Thanks for joining us on Bloomberg Quaint. I'm with me, Daniel Graf, Vice President Product at Uber. Thank you, Daniel. Uh, and welcome to India. Thanks for having me here. It's a pleasure. What are the key areas you're going to double down on investment going forward from now onwards? Yeah, so moving forward in, in emerging markets, and I'm actually super happy uh, we did uh, and we, we opened uh, our engineering center in Hyderabad yesterday in Bangalore. Right. We opened uh, early of 2016. Now we have two engineering centers in India, and we're going to continue uh, to, to grow that. For markets like India, and we, we had tremendous innovation actually coming out from our India team here, for example, cash payments, right? Mm -hmm. Cash payments started here, and now it's a global phenomenon. I couldn't imagine Uber without cash payments. Uh, uh, other other features uh, we, we are announcing is, for example, that uh, you can cache your searches. Like when you're in a network uh, situation, like it's 3G or even slower, or even if, if you <coughs> come straight out of an elevator, you don't have good network connection, but you want to put in the address or the location you want to go, uh, we can do, cache those now. We know based on your history, based on common uh, destinations in your city, we can cache. Another thing we're doing, uh, which we're announcing is uh, m.uber.com that you don't need an app. You can go to a browser and you get the full Uber experience uh, through a browser. Uh, another feature uh, which is, which is uh, for, for a market like India or like Indonesia or Brazil is that you actually you don't need a browser, you don't need an app. Right. All you need to do is call and then through an automated assistant, you can actually get an Uber straight through a phone call. Super easy to do. Right. And you know, uh, understanding driver sentiment is a big issue in a market like India. We've been have seen a lot of products in your main markets in Delhi, Bangalore. What efforts are you know you think you can bring in place to uh, handle uh, the driver uh, to educate them as well at the same time? Yeah. So, so. I think one of the reasons why, why I and my colleagues, why we, are, why, why we are at Uber is we're creating economic opportunities for, for people uh, across the world. We have over 2 million uh, driver partners uh, worldwide. In India, over 450,000. Those 450,000 driver partners, they can have a car. Uh, they're making a living, a living through Uber. Right. And, and that's, that's phenomenal to do that. Uh, clearly, uh, there's things going well, and there's still things which we have to work on. What the right. driver wants is a driver wants to have a sustainable, sustainable income that it's predictable. Uh, that's what the driver wants, and a lot of time that means for us, uh, we got to be transparent about it. If next week is a holiday and no one mm. is in the city, we should share this with our driver partner. Or something which we launched earlier this year is full transparency. A lot of times. Uh, driver partners were like, I'm not sure if the how much the rider paid, how much I'm getting, and all that. There was confusion there. We now, after every single trip, right. a driver can go into the details of a trip and see how much did the rider pay, was there a promotion applied, how much did the driver make, was there a toll applied, line item by line item. So full transparency with our partners is very important. Another thing which is very important for our driver partners is flexibility. Mm -hmm. that, that's core to Uber, right? That a partner can decide when he or she uh, wants to be on the Uber system and when not. Super flexible. No one tells him that you have to be there at 8 a.m. No, I decide when the right time is for me to drive. Right. But do you think you have a, a product in the U.S. which called you know you allow drivers to tip? Uh, perhaps something like that could also help drivers in India. Is that also a thing on those lines? You know introducing uber tip in india also to you know uh, mm -hmm. so for every feature uh what we do is it starts somewhere mm -hmm. and then we are we're entrepreneurs at heart so we start small we experiment and we see how things go right. when we start a cash in india we didn't think it becomes a global phenomenon now it is and uh tipping we have launched in the us and in some other markets actually as well we see where it's going uh it, it depends uh, how our, we're testing a lot, we're experimenting a lot, and then we see if it's the right thing for, for a local market or not. Right. And Uber has been making a lot of investment in the autonomous uh, driving, mm -hmm. autonomous drive sharing economy as well. Yep. And you have been running a few pilots in the US. Do you think something like that could work in India 
and to when can we see that expansion or test runs happening in other markets also? so so there's there's two questions there's the if and the when yeah the if absolutely yes this is going to happen in the entire world right it was actually interesting i was in the hotel in delhi a few days ago uh, and then uh, there was a round table on indian tv about autonomy and how it's how how it's also going to happen in india of course it's going to happen here it's going to happen everywhere uh, when that's going to happen remains to be seen it's it's a technical challenge i'm i'm proud that we are we are a, a ride share company the only ride share company that offers rides in autonomous cars uh, we do this in two cities in the us right now we're learning we're experimenting and then we see where it goes from there right and, and your arrival in india uh, ola has been partnering with electric vehicle companies and also using e vehicles and and other partner with telangana government as well and they've started uh, doing electric vehicles uh, using as an ola Ola fleet can Uber also be expect that to do that in India also are you are you excited so, about the electric vehicle space as i mentioned before we are always open to experiment uh in 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 any direction you know we have to see what's right what's actually what's very important is uh we are when you look at the transportation market where how people move ground transportation if they take a bus a taxi their own car if they walk if they take a, a an, an Uber there's so much room for we are a tiny thing in this global ground transportation uh, market we're still at the very beginning of this and uh, sometimes it's us that experiment something and sometimes someone else so uh, there's there's we're in this for the long run uh, and what's very important for us is of course we want to invest in what benefits our customers which means our riders and our drivers the most that's most important for us last one has been a tough for Ula or uber uh, you have had a uh, a sexual harassment case there was a rape case which was handled badly in india then we saw travis leaving the hell we saw other uh, senior executives leaving the the company what has changed now and what are the key lessons uh, you you could have you know drawn from that yeah i i think and and to be honest if, if i would say now oh everything's great we have a lot of learning to do we have done a lot of learning uh, this year uh and previous years as well and this is primarily to do with If you look at the growth of Uber as a company, this was we were a hyper we still are a hyper growth one of the fastest growing businesses ever uh, in history and when you grow this fast uh, you can't prepare for everything in hindsight you're always smarter and you're like oh you should have thought of that right. and uh, we have made we have made our fair share of mistakes uh, we're learning from those mistakes and uh, we're we're going together with Dara at the helm we're taking on the new chapter thank you uh, thank you very much been to bloomberg quint very nice meeting you thanks Same.